During the next hour, we'll be showing you several advanced techniques with Deluxe Paint 4. We assume that you have some working familiarity of D-Paint. However, if you need a greater understanding of the program's features and tools, you may want to get Volume 1 of this video series, the Deluxe Paint 4 Video Guide. Some of our examples will refer to files that are included with D-Paint, so have them available if you plan to follow along. This example will demonstrate a variety of shading and coloring techniques. We will show one way to create a textured background and how to use shading to add dimension. Some text manipulation will also be done. Use the range requester to establish a group of grays. Select airbrush with the right mouse button to set its size. Choose a color within the gray range and select cycle from the mode menu. Draw to create an airbrushed gray area. Use the brush tool to pick up the airbrushed area. Once again, choose airbrush. Turn the menu and toolbox off and start drawing to fill the screen with a sandy pattern. Choose the brush pickup tool again and grab a brush that's the height of the screen but only one pixel wide. Select the line tool and choose smooth from the mode menu. To hold the brush by the corner Select Handle Corner from the Brush menu, or use the keyboard equivalents. Now, with the menu and toolbox off, drag the custom brush across the bottom of the screen. D-Paint will now slowly sweep across the screen, smoothing out the background. Turn the toolbox and menu back on, and select Rectangle with a single pixel brush and select Color from the Mode menu. We'll now draw a rectangle around the perimeter of the screen, erasing the one pixel edge that did not get smoothed. Next, we'll swap to our spare page. Using the Polygon tool, we'll create a shape that looks like a beveled edge, and then pick it up as a brush. Using the J key, we'll jump back to the picture. For the next step, we'll need to choose a color that's within the gray range that we defined earlier, and choose Shade from the Mode menu. After turning the menus off, we stamp down the brush with the left mouse button to darken the bottom edge of the screen. After flipping the brush, we can stamp it at the top of the screen with the other mouse button, lightening the area. We perform the same technique on the left and right hand sides to complete our background. Now use J to swap to the spare page. Load a color font from your art desk. We will use bevel. In this example, we'll use the words first place. We'll pick the word place up and move it further on the screen, giving us more room. Now using the line tool and white with a single pixel brush will make a small line that's about the width of a single letter. We'll use the brush tool to pick up our line. Now using the right mouse button on the curve tool, we bring up the spacing requester. Since the word first has five letters, we'll set the spacing to five. 
now draw our curve, we see there are five equally spaced lines for us to place our letters on. Using the brush tool, we pick up each letter one at a time and place it on the line. Using the fill tool, we erase each little line that the letter was placed on. We can pick up our whole word first as a brush and go back to our main picture. We'll position it and stamp it down. Now using the shade tool, we can shade an area underneath of our word. This makes the word first look as though it's hovering above the granite background. We'll now jump back to our spare page and pick up the word place as a brush. From the brush menu, we'll select bend vertical and arch our brush in the downward direction. jump back to our main picture and stamp it on the background. Using the same shading technique as before, we'll place a drop shadow under the word place. For the next step, we'll go to the spare page and clear it. We'll load a font called Chisel. We'll simply type a 1 and the letter ST. Using the brush tool, we'll pick up the letters ST and have them. We'll stamp the resized brush down next to the 1. Using the brush tool, we'll pick up the whole object. We'll click the current color in the selector with the right mouse button so that we can select the color of the darker part of the brush. Next, we choose the brightest white from the palette with the left mouse button. Using the brush color swap menu item, a segment of our brush changes color. We repeat this process, selecting progressively brighter colors from the object and progressively darker colors from the palette. We use this technique not only to change the color of the brush, but also the apparent highlight. We can now jump back to the main picture and see the effect we have created. We'll position our brush and stamp it down. This completes our first example. A variety of depaint effects and manipulations can be performed on text to create new looks. Our first example will be to show how to combine two color fonts which normally use different color palettes on the same ham screen. We'll use bevel first and choose that font's palette. We'll simply type font 1 for this example. We'll now load a second font such as granite. This uses a completely different font. When we use the second font's palette, our first font changes to the wrong color, but a simple remap will correct that. As you can see, we can use two color fonts on the same screen. Our next demonstrations will show how to manipulate existing fonts to create new looks. We'll use a first font called engraved. We'll simply type the word text for this example. To give our word a three-dimensional look, we'll pick it up as a brush. Then choose line from the toolbox. By dragging it out just a short distance, it gives our brush an extruded look.
You can also give text a facelift by giving it a new color. We'll begin by bringing up the range requester and setting up a range from red to green to blue. We'll bring up the rectangle fill types and choose line. Turn process tint on and drag the rectangle over the entire word text. We'll set the direction, and when we let go, Deluxe Paint begins recoloring our word for us. This creates a nice colorizing effect. A moment ago, we showed you one way to create a three-dimensional look. Now we'll show you another. We pick the word text up as a brush, and using perspective, tilt it to give it an odd angle. We'll stamp it down and bring up the Move Requester. We choose Come To, set the distance to be negative 20, and set our count to match. And we'll want the move to occur on the brush axes. We can preview this to see how the brush will move. When we draw it, Deluxe Paint begins stamping the brushes in the distance, bringing them forward. This gives our word a real three-dimensional look. Now let's show how to create an embossed effect. We bring up the color palette and set up three shades of blue. Using the in-between blue, we'll make a large rectangle. We'll choose a simple Helvetica font and a large point size. For our example, we'll use the word embossed. We then pick up our word as a brush and choose the lighter of the three blues. Choose color from the mode menu and stamp the brush down. Using the darker blue, Stamp the brush down again, diagonally, two pixels off from where the first one was stamped. And finally, use the medium shade of blue to stamp between the dark and light colors. The word embossed appears to be pressed into the page. By reversing the light and dark colors, you can give a raised effect as well. To create a nice wallpaper pattern, simply pick these up as a brush and choose from brush from the fill types. Clear the screen, turn off the title bar and menu, and fill. This completes our second example. You have probably seen this animation before. We will show you one way it could be created. As you will see, color cycling can be a very effective way to animate. We'll begin by bringing up the palette requester. We'll first need a range of reds, so we'll copy the first some distance away and spread between them. We'll also need whites and do the same effect. We'll now bring up the range requester and set up the reds and whites along the bar. We'll bring up the rate for cycling and show. We don't want any dithering, so we'll choose random and slide dither to off. You can now see how the reds and whites will cycle. Next, turn on grid and bring up the fill types requester. Choose left to right and OK. Drag out a rectangle that's twice as wide as it is tall. With grid still on, Pick the red and white squares up as a brush and stamp them next to each other. Pick up this row and stamp them offset by one square, giving a red and white checkerboard pattern. When we turn on color cycling, the red and white squares appear to move. Using the brush tool, we'll pick up a group of these squares. 
We can now clear the screen. We'll bring up the fill type requester and choose solid. So our circle will not be distorted, we'll choose B square from the prefs menu and then make our circle. We'll once again bring up fill types and choose wrap. When we fill our circle, we see the checkerboard pattern wrapped onto it. When we color cycle, it appears to spin. We can now pick up our ball as a brush. We'll clear the screen and it will also turn grid off. From the Anim menu, we'll choose Frames Set Number and set our frame count to 50. We stamp our brush at the bottom of the screen and bring up the Move Requester. Count is set to 50, we'll set Ease In to 50, and the Y Distance to 100. We can now preview our movement. Since the move looked okay, we'll choose Draw. D-Paint will now stamp our brush on every page, gradually bouncing up the screen. By using the brush tool and holding down the Alt key, we pick up the entire area that the brush bounced within as an anim brush. We'll choose all 50 frames. D-Paint steps through each frame, picking it up for us as a brush. Next, from the Anim menu, we'll choose Anim Brush Settings and choose Ping Pong. We'll note that the duration is now 98. We'll set our frame count also to 98. We'll choose Clear and select All Frames. All 98 pages are now clear to animate on. We choose Handle Corner using Alt X, bring up the Spacing Requester, and set End Total to 98. Bring up Anim Brush Settings again, and set our current to be at a midway point at 48. Position the Anim Brush on the left-hand edge of the screen and drag it to the right. We see the path that it will bounce on. When we let go, Deluxe Paint stamps our Anim Brush on every page. When it's finished, turn on Color Cycling and press the 6 key to watch the animation bounce back and forth. This clever technique can be used to create TV style effects in creating a slideshow. In addition to a page turn, the same idea could be used to perform other reveal effects. We'll begin by selecting a color from the palette and filling the screen. Next, we'll choose a darker color from the palette and one of the larger brushes then the Curve tool. We'll drag a curve out to represent the bottom edge of the page curled up. We'll then drag the right-hand edge of the page curled. Now, using the Straight Line tool, We'll draw the edge of the curl. We now have a simple line drawing looking like a page turn. We'll fill the back of the front page with gray. Next, we'll choose pink and fill the area that represents our second page. We'll now swap to D-Paint Spare Page and choosing the same color we initially used, clear the screen. From the Anim menu, set number of frames to 20. Pick up the entire screen as a brush. 
This will give you simply a solid blue area. Choose color and pink. Bring up the line spacing requester and choose N total, making sure that its value is set to 20. Choose brush, handle, corner, so you're holding the brush by its corner. Use Alt-X to select which corner you're holding it by. From the lower right hand corner of the screen to the upper right corner, drag a line while holding the Alt key. D-Paint will then stamp the pink rectangle, gradually increasing in size from the lower right to the upper left edge of the screen. Shift 2, we jump to the last frame in the animation and bring up the Add Frames requester. We'll add an additional 20 frames. When we play the animation back, it looks like a pink square expanding. We'll now jump back to our picture of the curled page and pick it up as a brush. We'll use the J key to return to our animation and bring up the fill type requester. From here we'll choose brush. Turn off the menu and toolbox and point to the lower right hand corner. If we begin filling from the lower corner by holding the alt key, we see deluxe paint resizes our brush each time to fill the pink square. It will take some time for deluxe paint to do the entire animation. Now that completes the first half of our animation. Now to complete the animation. We'll choose line and drag a line with our custom brush from the lower right corner to the upper left hand corner while holding the Alt key. D-Paint will drag our brush out of view. If we now play back this animation, we can see it looks like a blue page revealing a pink page. We'll now want to apply a picture to each of those colors. First load a background from the art disk called Aquarium Background. Since this used a different color palette, we'll need to remap it. First, we'll restore our original palette and then choose Remap. We'll use the J key to return to our animation. From here, choose the background color to be light blue. From Spare, choose Merge in Back and All Frames. Deluxe Paint will then merge the aquarium background onto all areas that were light blue within the animation. This too could take several moments. Now to apply a picture to the pink area. We'll return to our Spare page again and this time load a different background, such as Venus. She too will need to be remapped. Once again, choose Palette, Restore Palette, and then Remap. We'll jump back to the animation and use the same technique as before. Using the 2 key, we advance a couple of frames to reveal the pink and then select that pink as our background color. Choose Merge in Back and select All Frames. Venus is now mapped onto the second page. animation back in ping pong fashion, it appears as if the aquarium background is being peeled off and replaced back over Venus. Try using this merge in back technique with your own pictures and wipe effects.
Techniques demonstrated in this example are rather advanced. We will be showing how to wrap an anna brush onto a sphere, add highlights, and move an object on a path. We will be using low resolution 32 color. First, load the image that came with Deluxe Paint called World Map. Since we want simply a two color map, we'll choose Stencil Make. We'll begin by eliminating the black drop shadows. We'll select the ocean color and filled rectangle and fill the image area. Blue replaces the areas that were black. Next, we want to make the landmass green. We protect the ocean and choose green from the color palette. Once again, drag a rectangle out over the screen. We now have a simple two-color map. We'll free the stencil since we won't need that any longer and pick up our entire map as a brush. We'll clear the screen and choose Anim Set Frames. We'll set our frame count to be 37. We'll hold the brush by its corner and choose Line. We'll bring up the settings and set end total also to 37. We'll place our cursor in the lower left corner and while holding the Alt key, drag a line across the bottom of the screen. When we let go, Deluxe Paint stamps our brush in 37 equally spaced steps across the page. Once again, choose Handle Corner to swap the corner that's being held. Drag out a line again from the lower left to the lower right and let go. We now have a seamless animated world on a flat surface. We'll choose Anim Brush Pickup and pick up an area equal to approximately half of the screen. We'll only pick up 36 frames, however. This is to avoid a hiccup. We'll clear all frames of our animation and choose B-square from the Prefs menu. We'll choose Circle and make a circle to be filled with our Anim brush. We'll copy this circle to all frames. And be sure we're using the Anim brush. We'll bring up the fill type and choose wrap. To Anim fill, hold down the Alt key when you press the left mouse button. D-Paint steps through each frame, filling with the next animation brush frame. When finished, we can play this back to reveal a spinning world. We'll bring up the palette mixer so we can establish some colors for highlighting. We'll first set a spread of greens and then set a spread of blues. This will be used for the land and the ocean. Next, we'll bring up the range control panel. We'll begin by establishing the blues to be used in the ocean. These are arranged from light blue to dark blue, and then one final dark blue some distance away. Next, we'll set up the land masses. We'll use the same technique. We'll bring up the fill type from the circle tool and select highlight. We'll drag an area out the size of our earth and press J so this is being drawn on the spare page. When we let go, we see a green circle with a highlight. We'll pick up the circle as a brush and return to our animation. Choose stencil, make, and be sure it's clear. 
we choose the landmass color, green, and select Invert, then click Make. We stamp our circle over our world and invoke the Move Requester. Set the count to 36 and draw. The highlight brush is now stamped on all 36 frames of our world. We'll do this again using range 3, which is the ocean color. Dragging out the circle, setting its highlight spot, picking it up as a brush, returning to the animation, then creating a stencil of just the ocean, stamping the brush down, invoking the move requester, and clicking draw. We now have a highlight of both landmass and the ocean. When we play the animation back, you can see how the three-dimensionality is enhanced. We can add greater emphasis to this highlight by changing the color palette. Remember to change the blues and the greens. We will now pick up our brush as an anim brush, complete with highlight. We can now clear all frames. From the anim frames set number menu item, we'll set our frame count now to 72. Bring up the move requester, Set the ease out to 18, and the ease in to 18, and in the Z distance, 150. When we preview the move, we see our brush move into the distance. We will now draw. As the world spins, it moves off into the distance. By setting the Z distance to negative, we can now have the brush come back into the foreground. If we play this, we can see the animation. We'll now pick up this entire work as an anim brush. However, be sure to enter all 72 cells. Once again, we can clear off our animation. We'll bring up the anim brush settings and set our current number to 54. This puts us about two thirds into the animation. Bring up the ellipse tool spacing requester and set n total to 72 representing our 72 frames. When we drag out the ellipse, we can see that Deluxe Paint stamps 72 steps of our anim brush on our ellipse shape. When it's finished drawing, we can play this animation back, and our planet looks as though it's not only spinning, but traveling in an orbit. We go to our spare page and select Clear. We choose a variety of grays and blacks that we will use to create a star pattern. To create this star pattern, we'll select the airbrush tool with the right mouse button to make it large and choose Cycle from the mode menu. We now draw with this airbrush and it scatters stars all over the screen. Turn to our animation and from the picture menu choose spare, merge in back. Select all frames and the star field will be stamped behind all frames of the animation.
When we play the animation back, it looks just like the Earth spinning in outer space. Well, I hope not. The metamorph feature is probably one of the most intriguing effects that has been added to Deluxe Paint 4. In addition to creating distortions, you can also perform different dissolves and fades. In this example, we will be using low resolution ham. We'll first need our brushes to be morphed. We'll use the Cara Granite. We'll need two brushes to begin with, first being Meta, and second being Morph. We'll pick up the word Meta as a brush, and copy it to the Spare brush. Next, we'll pick up the word Morph. We can now Metamorph between these two. For our example, we'll use 20 frames. This creates the most common distorted type of morph. We will want to compare each of our anim brushes, so let's go to the spare page and establish an animation with 20 frames. We'll stamp it down and use the move requester to stamp the remaining 19 frames for us. When we play this back, we can see it distort forward and backward. Next, we'll show how to do a dissolve. Dissolves and fades are created maintaining a consistent size between the two brushes, so we'll establish a basic size. We'll pick up the rectangle, which will represent our consistent size, and place it over the word more. We'll also place it over the word meta. Since Meta is not centered, we will need to pick it up and center it within our area. We now set our background color to match that of our boundary and pick up the word Meta as a brush. The background color, which is now green, is transparent, meaning that black becomes part of the brush. We copy it to the spare and do the same with more. Now we can use the metamorph feature to dissolve between these two brushes, both with solid black backgrounds. As you can see, this creates more of a dissolve effect. Let's stamp it on our animation so you can compare. Stamp down the first one, choose move, and draw. You can see the drastic difference. For our final step, we'll pick up the word meta once again as a brush, still having green as our transparent background color, and copy it to spare. Since we want the word meta to fade to black, we'll pick up an empty black square. Once again, we choose Morph from the Brush menu. However, we need to set the number of cells this time to 10, since we want it to fade from Meta to Black in half as many frames. We'll go back to the animation and stamp the first half down. As before, we'll use the Move requester, this time setting the count to 10. has now faded to black. Now for the second part, we pick up the black square. Have that become our spare brush. Pick up the word morph. And perform the metamorph function. 10 frames is still correct. We now see a fade from black to the word morph. 
We'll stamp this anim brush down on the 11th frame of our animation and use a move requester once again to complete it. We see the word morph fade from black. When we play this back in ping pong fashion, you can see the three types of metamorphing that can be accomplished. While we have used text, any objects will work. While Deluxe Paint 4 is a great tool for the artist, it is also useful in creating charts and graphs. By combining different tools, most anyone can create business graphics. We will demonstrate two graphs, both using low resolution, half bright mode. We'll begin with a bar graph. With grid turned on, we create vertical and horizontal lines to place our graph within. From the line spacing requester, choose end total, 20. Drag a line vertically up along the left hand edge and pick it up as a brush. Once again, bring up the line spacing requester and choose continuous. Drag a short line to add vertical tick marks to your graph. Next, choose a color for the top of each bar. Using the polygon tool, create a diamond shape. You must be careful not to make the diamond too large, since there will need to be several of them to make the chart. Next, choose the color that is to appear as the front face of each bar. Using the line tool, draw a line across the bottom edge of the polygon shape. Then choose the color that will be used on the bar's right side. Use the line tool once again to highlight the right edge of the polygon. Now pick up the diamond shape as a brush. Bring up the line spacing requester and set end total to 4, representing the 4 bars that we will be adding. Turn grid off and drag a line from the bottom position of the first bar to the bottom position of the last bar. Bring up line spacing once again and turn on continuous. Position the brush at the first location and drag it up. Do this with each location, creating each bar to the appropriate height. This must be one of the quickest ways to create a bar chart. Add text as appropriate, being careful to position everything exactly as needed. Add a pretty background, and it's done. Oh, and one last thing, don't forget the title. For our next chart, we'll create a pie chart. We'll begin by choosing ellipse and set spacing to 20. Turn on grid and create the top surface of our pie. These marks will be used so we can measure out equal proportions. We'll use the line tool with continuous set and starting at the center, position the marks around our pie. we'll want six portions. Now that we have our pie properly portioned, we can use continuous line ellipse to outline it. We'll use the fill tool and different colors from our palette to fill each piece. We'll choose Stencil Make from the Effects menu and choose the color that was used to create the outline and invert it. When we clear the screen, the gray is removed. We'll clear the old stencil and make a new stencil of the red so we can pull that piece out. When we pick it up as a brush, we're able to remove only the red piece. We clear the stencil 
and stamp down the pie piece somewhat pulled out. We'll now pick up the entire pie as a brush. Next, we select the line tool and draw using grid a short line on the screen of our pie. We now bring up the fill type and choose H bright. We'll stretch our rectangle over our image to make it darker, restore our original brush and stamp it down. We now go to the spare page and create a spread fill of light gray to dark gray. We choose H bright and use our brush to create a shadow. We pick up our entire pie, stamp it over our background, and things are starting to come to shape. We simply add a title and values to each pie piece, and it's finished. In this section, we will show you two quick tips that you may find useful. Usually, when you run Deluxe Paint, you have to go through setting things up to suit your needs. First is the screen selector, where you must set the resolution, number of colors, and overscan settings. Next, you may want to make changes to the press menu, such as turning on B-square or coordinates. Then, most likely, you'll want to make changes to the palette. This can be rather time consuming. Some range changes may also be necessary in your preferred setup. But you can set it up once and save the blank screen as a picture. Call it your favorite. This will remember your resolution and colors. To have D-Paint remember the prefs menu for you, select the paint icon with one click. Then choose the information item from Workbench. Choose New or Add and enter the word or words from the prefs menu that you always want to have set. Be sure to spell it exactly as it appears in the menu. Then save this information. The next time you want to start D-Paint in your favorite mode, simply double click the picture icon rather than the D-Paint icon. The prefs menu will already be set. Colors in both the palette and in ranges will be waiting for you. Incidentally, you can create several quick start pictures. Just be sure to give them a name that you can identify. The next example allows you to change the color palette without bringing up the color mixer. When not in perspective mode, the currently selected color can be changed using the numeric keypad. 7 and 8 adjust the red, 4 and 5 adjust the green, and 1 and 2 adjust the blue. In this segment, we have selected some companion products that we have found to be valuable accessories for use with the Deluxe Paint 4 program. Deluxe Video 3 from Electronic Arts provides complete control over Amiga's graphics, animations, and sounds. With its visually oriented interface, D-Video 3 adds full integration of sound effects, music, and MIDI to make a complete audio-visual presentation. It can be used to create interactive demos, animated cartoons, or other types of presentations. Deluxe Video 3 supports graphics in all Amiga resolutions, anims and anim brushes, IFF standard sounds, and MIDI. Carafonts from Cara Computer Graphics 
are high-resolution dimensional color fonts for the Amiga. While you can find a sampling included with Deluxe Paint, there are several packages available for sale, each offering a different selection of font styles and point sizes. Headlines is a three-disc set containing chrome, marble, brick, granite, wood, bevel, cast, chisel serif, and column. Headlines 2 is a two-disc set that contains the very nicely done chisel script, which is an italic script in upper and lower case. In addition, glass, engraved, and embossed styles are included. Subheads is a two-disc set, which offers scaled-down point sizes of the fonts found in the headlines set. Because of their size, the subhead fonts can be more easily used in low resolution. In addition to the fonts, various color palettes are included with each set allowing greater versatility of the text appearance. Due to the popularity of Cara fonts and the Anim brush feature in Deluxe Paint, Cara Computer Graphics developed Anim fonts. These fonts are loaded in as Anim brushes, allowing them to animate on the screen. Anim fonts 1 is a Chrome script. It is an eight color formal script in upper and lower case. Each letter appears to be handwritten onto the screen. Anim Fonts 2 is Boyan. This font rotates onto the screen 90 degrees on the y-axis while a glint of light travels across the face. Anim Font 3 is called Capsule. This uppercase contemporary font sparkles on from the middle revealing the characters. Then a sparkle goes from left to right across each letter. A separate sparkle is included so that you can create your own custom effects. All of these Anim fonts include additional palettes so that you can easily create different variations. The Art Department Professional from ASDG is a 24-bit plain image processing system for the Amiga. This program can read almost any image file format. Loaders and savers for IFF, Digiview, Sculpt4D, TurboSilver, GIF, PCX, and others are included. It offers conversion between 208 different graphic modes, including any of the Amiga's resolutions, color selections, and overscanning. Super accurate digital scaling, color conversions, color separations, dithering, and other image processing functions are provided. If the art department professional is more power than you need, consider getting the standard art department, which has fewer yet similar capabilities. Image Finder from Zardoz Software is a great utility for finding graphic files by looking at miniature thumbnails of the images in full color or in grayscale. Discs can automatically be scanned for pictures or animations and stored in an index file. The thumbnails can be browsed and simply by double clicking the drawer and file name can automatically be inserted into the file requester in dpaint or any other application. The buddy system for Deluxe Paint 4 from Help Disk is an interactive personal guide through the features and fundamentals of Deluxe Paint. At any time, simply press the Help key and the Buddy system will kick into action. It features an informative point-and-click interface for looking up the instructions for any D-Paint feature. In addition, many real-time examples using the Buddy system's exclusive AnimMouse are available to help demonstrate features. The Buddy system lets you learn at your own pace, learn on your own computer, learn by using, because seeing something once is better than reading about it a hundred times. You will find that as you use Deluxe Paint 4, it has an endless combination of features and tools. If you discover a technique that you would like to share, please send them to us at this address. We hope you have found our demonstrations in this video informative and entertaining. While you may not have a need for any of the examples exactly as shown, you should be able to utilize the different techniques in your own applications. Just use your imagination, and most importantly, have fun.